G'day, Alistair here. In this video, we are going to make alcohol, and we're going to do that by fermenting some sugar. So there, there are lots of different kinds of sugars you can ferment. We are going to use dextrose, but you could also use table sugar or all sorts of sugars from grains and all sorts of things like that. But we're going to use dextrose because it's nice and simple and it ferments reasonably well. Now, to be able to ferment the sugar, we are going to need a yeast. And for this I have a packet of Still Spirits Turbo Pure Yeast. And that is going to convert the, um, it's going to eat the sugar and produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. Now, further to that, we have some turbo carbon, which is just um, very fine carbon particles, and that'll help filter out some undesirable things in the wash. And finally, turbo clear which we will later use once the fermentation is finished to clear out, it'll make everything settle. And so that's what was in the packet. And so what we're going to do now is put seven kilos of dextrose into a bucket and then add hot water and get it down to about 30 degrees Celsius and then add the turbo yeast and turbo carbon. So let's uh, do that now. So I'm just going to scoop out until we have a nice round amount of dextrose. Now it's very fine, it's kind of like icing sugar. And so it's 400 grams. Okay, it's a kilo. That's about two liters, I might do it one kilo at a time. So I'm going to pour that in. And this is our final, final, final kilogram of dextrose. And seven kilos, as you'll see, represents quite a significant volume. Just a little bit more. 856 grams. kilo. And as you can see that represents, we can see the, the side here, there's quite a lot of uh, sugar in there and it's, it's quite fine. Very similar to something like caster sugar or, or icing sugar. To this sugar I'm going to add about 21 litres of water. Now I'm starting out with hot water because it makes the sugar easier to dissolve. I'll give that a little quick, a quick stir. Now this, because this, this dextrose is very fine, it dissolves very easily. And here we have the next three liters.
Here's our fourth lot of three litres. So that should take us to about 12 litres. And I want to check the temperature if they could stir. Because we want the final product to be about 30 degrees. Okay, this will give us about 15 litres of water. Our total volume is going to be a bit more than that because the um, dextrose will add a bit of volume. And check temperature. Yeah, I think I'll do the next one as hot and the last one cold. Okay. And our volume is oh, almost at the 23 litre mark. And temperature 37 degrees, so I'll do the next one cold. That should get us pretty close to 30 degrees, I think. I think I'll stop there actually. It's giving us a total of a little bit over 23 litres, which is about where I want to be, I think. Let's double check the instructions. Yes, yeah, there's 21 litres of cold or hot water. But that should be all right. For the next step, I'm going to throw a hydrometer in there. And it's giving a bit of a spin to remove any bubbles. And I'll just move that to the edge so it's a bit easier to read. And let's get the camera down there and see what we can see. Okay, I'll just try and hold this steady with my hand. And what we want is the specific gravity, which is that one, which is reading about 1.9, 1. Uh, 1. that's 1. 1.1. So it'll be 1.095 or something like that, thereabouts. Next up, we're going to add our Turbo Pure Yeast. And I'm just going to sprinkle this on. And then we want to add our Turbo Carbon. I'm just going to give this a bit of a squeeze and kind of loosen everything up in there. Okay, I'm just going to cut a corner off. Now, this stuff is extremely black. Fortunately, it's carbon, doesn't really stain, but even so. Don't want to get it everywhere. And I'm just going to give that a, a good stir. That's going to make the whole thing nice and black. And I'm going to put the lid. I'm going to put the lid on the same location, the hole where that spigot is. And Finally, I want to fit an airlock, so I'm going to put that little rubber bung in there, and a little bit of liquid in there, and fit that nice and secure. And next, we're going to leave that for about a week, and that should be nice and fermented uh, in that time, and then we'll add our last step, which is the turbo clear, and that will make um, all the particulates settle out so it's uh, like a flocculant or something. Uh, you can see I've got carbon on my fingers, so I need to be careful with that, but it does wash off, so it's not too bad. Okay, so we will come back in about a week's time. So it's one day later. And as you can see, this is bubbling away quite furiously. So the yeast inside the fermenter is busy 
converting the sugars to alcohol and carbon dioxide and obviously that carbon dioxide needs to go somewhere and we have this airlock. Now this allows, this has a little bit of water in the bottom of it so the carbon dioxide comes up, down and out and this water in here prevents any uh, oxygen from getting back in because we don't want, we want oxygen initially to get the yeast started but once the things are fermenting we don't want oxygen because it will, can feed other microbes and all sorts of other things. Uh, in particular it can convert the alcohol into vinegar which is something we definitely don't want. And so yes um, we have this, this airlock and that prevents any oxidation happening. So it keeps the oxygen out. So that's all gone pretty well. So that's this is less than 24 hours. So that's bubbling away. The um, various turbo yeasts um, are very fast acting. And it's probably done in a week. Um, I might give it a little bit longer, depending. I think, I think it says three to five days or something like that. But giving it longer is a good idea if you can. Certainly most, mostly done in three, three days. But uh, it'll still be probably bubbling away a little bit. Okay, we'll come back when it is finished fermenting. G'day, we are back and it has been about 10 days and this finished fermenting several days ago. Uh, there's still a little bit of positive pressure and I think it might still be very gradually fermenting but it's more or less done. So I'm going to take the airlock out and let's take this lid off. That's about there. And So we can see that much of the carbon has settled out, but it is still quite a grey goo. Uh, <laughs> well, not really a goo, it's, it's, it's quite liquid. So what I'm going to do, um, this turbo yeast is in two parts. Part A, which we're going to add and stir in vigorously. So let's... Whoops, lost it a little bit there. But we will get this in. Get as much of that out as I can. Okay, and we've still got part B, and that goes in, in in about an hour's time. So, what I'm going to do is give this a good stir, and this will remove some of the carbon dioxide, so the fizz that's in there, you can see it frothing up a bit. And uh, it should all settle out, so once we add the part B, uh, it'll take about 24 hours, or in fact, probably about 8 hours, it's mostly settled out, and you could probably use it then. But I'll probably give it more, you know, a few extra days to see how it goes. Okay, I'm just going to refit the lid. And put the airlock back on. Now, what might happen is there might be some extra fermentation happening. We've mixed in a bit of oxygen and the stirred things around so the yeast is stirred up and it might give it access to a bit of sugar or something like that where it could continue, but that's fine. It'll only be a small amount of fermentation compared to what's already happened. Um, but you can, if you refit the airlock, you can monitor that. So we'll come back in about an hour's time and add part B. We are back again. So take that off, put that to the side, and remove the lid again. And this time, got the part B. I'm just going to snip the corner off. And very gently pour that over the top, kind of spread it around. going to take a spoon and very gently spread that so that it is all over the top. So that's part B added. Okay and now we leave that in wait and that will all settle out and take with it all the little bits of carbon and dead yeast cells and whatever and it'll sit out, sit out at the bottom. And that, that'll take about 24 hours. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up and put it on the bench uh, because the next step will be to rack it into the still and then we can distill it. Although there's more here than will fit in my still because I've just got a little still. But that's cool. So that goes on. That goes in and that's done for 24 hours. It might, you might mostly settle out in about eight hours time, but I will probably leave it for several days so that it settles out and it'll be crystal clear at that point. So we'll come back then. We are back and this is our finished settling. This has about, been about 10 days or so, so way longer than necessary. It's pretty much settled out in the first 24 hours, even the first eight hours, it had mostly settled out. And we can see that all the carbon and everything else in here, in here has settled out at the bottom. So let's open this up, have a look inside and take some specific gravity measurements so we can determine the alcohol content. Not that it really matters too much, but because it is definitely finished fermenting. So uh, let's have a look inside. So let's remove the airlock. Put that aside and peel that off. And you can quite clearly see the bottom. It is lovely and clear. So it's perfect. Let's grab our hydrometer. I'll throw that in. Give it a bit of a spin to detach any bubbles. So I reckon that is actually a little bit under 0 0.9. If I can actually get it to face the front and stay facing the front. So 0 0.88 or 0 0.89, something like that. Okay. We're now finished this video on making a sugar wash. My next step will be to rack this into, um, or gravity siphon it into a uh, still and distill that to produce basically vodka but I'll do that as a different video all we need now to do is calculate how much alcohol is in here so we'll do that now so let's do a brief calculation uh, we started with one point one oh four thereabouts and we've ended up with zero 0.987-ish. So we're at sort of 15% uh, alcohol, which is pretty good. If we bring up a calculator and say we've got about 22 litres, so there's a bit over 23 litres in there, 23 and a half litres. Probably lose about one and a half litres because of the um, uh, all the settling, everything at the bottom. So if we say 22, multiply that by one point, sorry, by 0 0.15. So that's roughly 3.3 litres of alcohol uh, at 100%. Uh, so the maximum sort of vodka 40% we would get. So we need to multiply that by 2.5 or divide by 0 0.4, uh, eight and a quarter litres. We won't get that because um, there's probably less less in there than that and um, you can't distill all the alcohol out anyway there's always usually a little bit left so thanks for watching this video and hopefully i will see you in the next video and we will distill our sugar wash and uh, get some uh, neutral spirit or vodka out at the end so thanks for watching